<laughs> well, hello. Ooh, don't try to talk to me like that. <laughs> That's when we start we start fighting because you're gonna ask me about the weather. I just know you are. <laughs> not today. Not today. <laughs> oh, not today. <laughs> no. Yeah, not gonna tell us how cold it is in Canada. Nope. Okay. All right. How cold is it in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite warm. <laughs> ah. Well, I want you to know that it is beautiful, according to what I've been told, outside here in Southern California at an undisclosed location in a bunker <laughs> somewhere. Uh, near the beach uh, here in Southern California. I have been told uh, that it's really nice, but because I have shaved my head, I'm cold. So uh, I have a beanie on until my body regulates itself properly. Hello, Anne. Hello, NPD Recovery. Um, some love. I got a show over here. Let me turn this thing around. Everything is improv today, everybody. I just got up and said, hey, just do the show. <laughs> Lighting, just put it anywhere. Uh, it's just kind of like, let's just do it. Uh, so, um, I got to move this over here so I can see it. So I can see it. <laughs> so I'll be doing a number of things that normally I don't have to do. So SC Cutlass, uh, is here, uh, solar eclipse. It looks like that's what that says there. Fadwa, uh, Mo is here, Mo the chick. And of course, uh, Anne, Lady Anne is here and NPD recovery flags is here as well. Thank you, Anne, for the love. Uh, oh, perfect. Uh, Angie is here. That is NPD Recovery Red Flags. Everybody, please talk with one another. Um, feel free to um, connect with one another. This is so improv. Normally, I have an idea of what I'm going to say. And, well, you're at, you're at my mercy more than anybody else. Uh, <laughs> so, because, well, a lot of people have said this is what they want to see. They are bored watching two people get on a Zoom and talk to each other about mental health. And, well, they want to see something different. So that's kind of what we're doing today. <laughs> different. So I'm just so tell excited. us what you want to say. Go ahead. I'm just saying I'm so excited. Uh, I've been yeah. looking forward to this for the past two weeks. Uh, I've been getting a lot of excitement when I'm telling, you know, the people, you know, my other audiences and things about it. Yeah. So hopefully we have some, uh, some of those guys come in and it looks like there is at least one or two here already. So welcome and thank you for joining us. And thank you to everybody else who found us another way. Um, I know Paxton has a bunch of other shows and things he does. So however you found us, I am just so happy you're here to join us. And I am looking forward to everything you guys want to talk about. There it is. Okay. Uh, I've got a few things that people did mention to me. So we're going to get to that um, because we gave them the email address, uh, which was at, excuse me, at, see, told you it's improv. I have no <laughs> notes. <laughs> okay. So it, what uh, a few people connected by going to Rhythm Entertainment Productions uh, 85, a rhythm, I don't even know my own email. I told you it's improv. <laughs> Straight from the ghetto. It happens when we don't <laughs> email ourselves all the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I don't. I hardly ever try to look at emails anyhow. I leave that for other people to do, you know, <laughs> executive producers and stuff. Uh, but uh, hello to Angie again. Uh, Mermaid uh, of Malibu is here. I just love that name, Mermaid of Malibu. Um, and uh, Rom is here. Uh, ooh. Hello. And uh, he says hello to the pretty guests. Uh, and of course, hello to me. Um, of course, this is the Coach Jess show, uh, the first show on Narc Abuse TV Network uh, as we are coming near the end of our second season and uh, a number of projects along the way. Uh, I'm smiling because there's one I haven't told Jess about uh, that we're hoping that she can uh, fit us in her schedule when she's do dealing with her clients and, and life in general. And uh, again, hello to you, Angie, as well. Uh, so, Anybody that's here in the chat right now, this is what I want you to do. Again, we're making this up as we go today. First time ever we've done this on Narc Abuse TV. But, Coach, you're going to be steering us where we want to go once I, I pick up uh, something out of the chat or uh, the ones that I have here in front of me that a, a few people sent in that they wanted us to talk about on the spur of the moment. And just Perfect. we just talk about it with everybody. So uh, first thing. Uh, that I want to do is highlight the fact that you offer to everyone who is a part of this ch live group chat 
Improv Day this Saturday, uh, they have the ability to receive your services for free. Yes, sir. Anyone yeah. that's a part of the chat, feel free to tell everybody that before I get started. Yeah, so everyone here, and of course, anyone that you know, you know and care about who could use some guidance or direction or anything along those lines um, when it comes to mental wellness, mental health, um, dealing with narcissists, things like that, that um, we really need some support and direction with sometimes. So you guys can all get a 30-minute free session with me. So all you have to do is DM me through my business account on Instagram here, which is at Life Plus Coaching. You should probably follow that too, just while you're at it. And, uh, <laughs> and just DM me through that and we can set that up together. Um, I really look forward to chatting with each and every one of you and uh, finding out what it is that I can provide you help with. So first up, um, first one I'm going to give you here, someone uh, sent uh, this in that they wanted to know. You got a pink card here. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, so pink card. <laughs> Um, what they wanted to, to uh, throw into this discussion, as we talked about last week, since we made this up last week, not last week, but a couple of weeks ago at the last show, is shame and guilt. They got two of them, man. So I just figured I said, mm -hmm. I told everybody to give me one, but they got two. <laughs> so let's go that route. Shame and guilt. If you have experienced shame and guilt by dealing with someone in a, well, abusive relationship, toxic relationship, a narcissistic abusive relationship. You've just been dealing with somebody who's treated you bad, but yet they try to make you, uh, well, carry shame and guilt. If you've experienced that, feel free to talk about it in the chat. If you would like to have your camera turned on, just type it in the chat. Just say it. Paxton, I'm ready to go live Okay, just say something like that. Paxton, I'm ready to go live. Jess, I'm ready to go live. I will pull you out of that and bring your camera up for a brief moment, and then, you know, I'm going to shut it off because, well, the lady here on her red throne is the diva for the day. So shame and guilt. Go right ahead. Shame and guilt are probably two of the most powerful feelings, emotions, um, concept I guess that we as human beings deal with they are incredibly powerful forces regardless of where they're coming from um, and they can easily be used to manipulate um, to control others to keep them in a position of um, less power than us um, it's associated with so many different types of abuse um, it, it they're it's hard for me to even just narrow it down to a couple of phrases. Um, shame and guilt are, again, they're things that, that keep you down. They, they're heavy. They're manipulative. Um, of course, there are things in our lives that we don't necessarily um, keep, like take pride in that we've done, but Feeling shame or guilt over something that is simply um, a character development or something in your life that other people don't agree with, um, that's, that's something that's an unearned kind of shame or guilt. Um, shame or guilt, on the other hand, associated, for instance, with um, our justice system, like when someone commits a heinous offense or um, does something absolutely terrible and we hold them accountable that shame and guilt can be very powerful and actually help them to transform certain individuals who are able to be rehabilitated back into society. So there are two very um, different pictures of shame and guilt, but, but they both kind of demonstrate how powerful it can be. One, our society tries to use, especially now with social media, um, parents shaming their children on social media for doing something wrong, um, not really realizing, I think, the full-blown consequences um, of, of what that shame and guilt can actually do moving forward, especially in a space that's as concrete as the internet, where things are just kept forever. Mm -hmm. um, there's records that can continue for you know, the rest of our lives. And so it, it, it's a really, really powerful thing that a lot of people in positions of power, even parents, really need to understand more before they try to 
use that to alter, dictate, transform someone else's behavior because it may have negative consequences going forward. Um, and if you fully don't understand what those can be, then it's not exactly a tool we should be using um, at our own discretion if we don't really know the actual consequences, the psychological um, consequences on the people that we might be using it with. Um, we may grow up in a household with very shallow affect or shallow emotions that we are, or we see our family experience. Um, a lot of shallow emotion deals with guilt and shame. Um, a lot of narcissists, again, use guilt and shame to manipulate the people that they're trying to control, um, the people that they feel that they can, because they know it's powerful. Um, and so it, it's something that both things, shame and guilt, are both very highly manipulatable. And, and that's why I think the only thing that we can really do on our own to avoid um, unnecessary or unearned guilt and shame is to truly know ourselves and to truly know what our genuine morals, values, goals, and all of those things are, because then we can't have others using our actions or um, our plans against us in a way to, to, uh, to get guilt and shame out of us or to make us feel guilt and shame towards our own choices. Because when you're strong and, and you have that basic understanding and that in-depth understanding of yourself and your genuineness, um, it's really, really hard to make you feel something you haven't earned, right? If that makes sense. It feels awkward because yeah. you're, you're trying to wrap your brain around, well, what did I do? And so many people that find themselves in situations where they are dealing with someone on a daily basis who tries to put on to them guilt and shame, many people try to figure out, well, what did I do? And uh, some are still um, experiencing that uh, shame and guilt that carried over from their childhood. Um, matter of fact, next thought is just that. Uh, someone wanted uh, us to discuss today uh, childhood trauma or childhood abuse and trying to navigate uh, when someone has experienced being mismanaged and uncared for and unloved by the person that was supposed to take care of them or their caretaker. Um, yeah, that is that is a very, very in-depth topic, something that you know, Paxton, I have a lot of personal experience with, as well as, of course, my education and professional experience. Um, but I, you know, lived through childhood trauma, abuse, and neglect. I managed to successfully go through the healing process with the appropriate professionals, medical um, professionals who helped me get through that. And um, I have been living a completely different life compared to when I was unhealed, when I didn't know fully what was you know, going on or what was quote unquote wrong with me. Um, and that is actually, before we continue, is, is something else that I wanted to add to that guilt or shame. When we don't know what we're doing that should make us feel guilty or shameful from someone else's perspective, we can almost bring that into our own identity. Like we should be shameful or feel guilty for just who we are mm -hmm. as human beings. And so that's another um, consequence that happens when we don't fully understand what exactly about our actions um, or words offended or hurt somebody else. Um, oh, thank you for adding that, Angie. And, and thank yeah. you, Anne, as well. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's a topic that's very, very um, close to my heart. And, and one of the reasons that I wanted to work in mental health to begin with is childhood trauma. Um, that, that almost lost feeling as you grow up and your brain continues to develop and you know, you're trying to figure out the things that happen compared to how you see your friends living their lives, how you see, um, sorry, I pointed at the screen in the middle of my sentence because Angie is just talking about The Four Agreements. Yeah. That is one of yeah. my favorite, mm -hmm. favorite books. And if anyone hasn't read it, who is part of the show right now, it is incredible. Um, let's, repeat, let's repeat that again for those who may just be stepping in. Uh, uh, Angie, yeah, said that right, right? NPD. Recovery Red Flags, 
she says she received a book titled The Four Agreements, and that's the book that you're highlighting. Uh, she mentioned that uh, I had a meeting for the last hour. One of the things we talked about was guilt and shame. So she's just uh, agreeing with you and uh, mentioning the book. And Anne, uh, the beautiful Anne, tells us, thank you for bringing this to light. Please go ahead, Coach. Yeah, so The Four Agreements um, is a phenomenal book if you're dealing with guilt, shame, even if you're dealing with childhood trauma. It is almost like uh, a little guide, like these four agreements are basically um, ways to kind of help you be true to yourself in how you live your life. Um, I can't remember the four of them off the top of my head, but one of them was be impeccable with your word. And that's one that always stands out to me because it's talking about um, essentially just being honest, being truthful, being genuine. And in that way, no one can ever really kind of shake you or push you off or, or um, away or around because you're not presenting yourself or anything you're doing as something other than what it is. And so you're never yep. claiming to be anything that you're not. And I think that's right. a really important, sorry, I keep cutting off, but it's a... No, it's no, no, really, no, 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 yeah. go right ahead. No, please, by all means, you, you go right ahead. Yeah. You were saying... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, Anne is absolutely correct. We, uh, we should not feel shame for others that have been yeah. abusive to us as children. We're all survivors. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Thank you, Angie. Don't take anything personally. Sorry, there's yeah. so much going on right now. This is, yeah. uh, this is such a great topic. Um, th the childhood uh, trauma is something that shame and guilt are very deeply rooted in. Um, those things, because when we are, as you said, mismanaged by the people who are supposed to be guiding us and protecting us mm -hmm. and, you know, making sure we are growing up into the best human beings we possibly can be, um, oftentimes when you are being abused or neglected or something in the household is going on that you are not being properly cared for, um, there are reasons for that, right? You may mm -hmm. not have the most attentive parents. You might have um, something that's going on in their lives that's distracting them from their children. You could have, um, you know, certain things that they're, they're make them unaccessible to their children, whether it's through work or um, other ways that they're not available and in the household. Um, there's all of these different things that kind of, it, it, it's never, I don't want to say never, but it, it's, it's rarely something that, like, you can look at a family and be like, those kids are being abused. It, it's something that's so hidden and, and the definition of even childhood abuse, neglect, all of those things, um, it, it, it needs to be so general that in essence, any child who feels as though they were mismanaged or neglected, mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. do grow into adults, like that is, that is your decision to make as that human being. You don't get to, or your parents don't get to say, no, you weren't. Right? It's the feelings that it elicits mm -hmm. in you and the mismanagement that you feel about what happens that makes it um, abuse or not. So I have a lot of people who come to me and say, well, was this abuse? Was that abuse? Well, if you felt it was abuse, if you feel like you were abused and that has had consequences for your ability to connect in the world, for the safety that you feel, for your mm -hmm. personal growth and development, then yes, it was abuse. And yes, you have every right to call it that. And you have every right to confront the people that engaged in that or didn't um, save you from it. Um, so when we are left alone to our own devices almost as children, we internalize a lot when we don't have um, caregivers to talk us through and process things. So the things that we end up, um, you know, making immature or rash decisions as children, as children do, you're testing your boundaries constantly. When we make decisions that end up hurting us or causing us some kind of um, permanent consequence or even impermanent consequence, we internalize that and we make it about ourselves not being good enough or making a poor decision or, or being stupid or not having the skills or abilities. We're children. We don't. We don't yeah. have the same abilities as adults. Yeah. And we ne like you cannot expect a child to be at the same level as an adult. And you don't learn that until you're adu an adult. No one tells children you know, like, you you don't have a, a, a right to your own feelings, right? And no matter how many times you tell, right, a teenager or a child, like, your brain still has developing to do, they feel like they know better. It's up to the caregivers to explain to them why they need to listen yeah. to that. It's up to the caregivers to allow that context to come in and make sense of that for the child. And, and there, there is no blanketed 
love that can be shown to every child in the house. And this is like the flat, the flat fee of love that I give a, a father or a mother, especially a father. I say that because I'm a dad. You can't just say, okay, this is all I'm giving out and everybody gets the same amount because one child, middle child, older child, whatever it may be, an only child, uh, the dipstick of love can run really deep for that child. So it's up to the parent to see whether they're giving the proper amount and measure of love for that given child. Uh, so, hey, don't have kids unless you're ready for it. That's what my daddy used to say. No, so absolutely. Not ready for it. You That's better, a yeah, smart. You better, you better, yeah, don't have no kids. As a father of seven, he could say that, though. But anyhow, That's what so I was going to say is <laughs> you have to be able to give each child what they need well, uh, and needs. what works for one doesn't work for the other. Yes. Yeah, you were sorry. Those needs go up and down as well. Yes. Like, you yes. know, you could yeah. have a child experiencing yeah. a crisis who may yeah. need more of your attention in those moments, um, but you can't neglect the other children, right? They, you know, you yeah. can explain to them that, oh, you know, your sibling needs me a little bit more right now, but that doesn't mean I, I love you any less. Like that, that full on communication that we expect in all of our relationships, that should also happen with children. Children, you can't just, ignore them or make it seem yeah. like what they feel doesn't matter what they think doesn't matter yeah. because they internalize that and that go like that carries with them the rest of their lives right? right so it's really important to have that communication open as open as possible um you need to have your children be able to tell you when you hurt them without oh, yeah. fear and that. consequence yeah. right like all yeah. of these things that you know um when, when my mom was a kid, she keeps, you know, she always said to me, like, children, you know, when I was a kid, children were seen and not heard. And that just breaks my heart into a million pieces yeah. that, like, you're yeah. not furniture just because you're not developed yeah. as an adult yet. We, we find ourselves um, uh, with something on the screen. We have find ourselves with something on the screen that is actually the next thing I was going to mention <laughs> this on this other card here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say that in just a second, but um, we're going to circle back this again, just so everybody knows. This is an unprepared improv show based upon what we talked about two weeks ago because we were goofing off. <laughs> Excuse me. I was goofing no. off. You were serious. No. I was goofing off. <laughs> and uh, we essentially said, we're just going to talk about whatever we want to talk about. And we made up this improv show. First time ever on Narc Abuse TV Network, Narcissism, Relationships, and recovery uh right here with um coach jess so we are doing this show with no major notes uh we we did ask viewers from the last show to write us get reach out to me uh and tell me what they wanted us to talk about and cram it all into the time frame we have here and that's what we're doing so you're gonna hear me talk really really fast today <laughs> uh and try to get it in and uh coach is going to do our best to uh highlight a, a number of points Feel free to talk with one another and connect with one another, another like usual. Uh, but today, um, we've just talked about uh, shame and guilt. Uh, and then we move to the subject uh, that somebody sent in. Uh, that was the first one. Uh, somebody sent in the subject concerning childhood trauma or childhood abuse. And uh, we were discussing that. But from the chat, Angie, NPD Recovery Red Flags, as well as Ann Crosby, highlighted a number of different points to keep in mind. I'm going to swing into what Angie said. She says she's reading directly from the book that uh, you yourself know about, which is called The Four Agreements. She said she just received this book. It's called The Four Agreements, and she just had a discussion for about an hour uh, ago or an hour uh, in regards of guilt and shame. She mentions here that she is directly quoting from the book. Uh, Angie, feel free to put some more in there if you'd like. But Angie says, don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. Um, feel free to let us know what each one of the four is. Feel free to put number one, number two, buy it, and just mention it uh, so that others can see what it is if they don't have the book, if you're still here, uh, Angie. <clears throat> um, Coach, the next one off of one of the cards that I have here, I wrote down what uh, others sent in to us. Um, the next one is actually what Ann just said. <laughs> Abandonment. Abandonment issues that lead to being in a toxic environment uh, is what she writes. Uh, but the word is abandonment. Uh, people wanted to hear us discuss 
dealing with that sense and reality of being abandoned and feeling abandoned uh, in relationships, um, go right ahead. Yeah, and so um, you guys who are, you know, in here and listening to us often, you know how much um, I refer to childhood development and foundations when it comes to what we um, accept in our lives as adults, what we find, quote-unquote, normal or healthy or acceptable or um, a, something we have to deal with in life. And so abandonment is also, of course, one of those things. It's one of those, um, if that happens to us early in life, then that makes us realize early in life that we are abandonable. So that is a natural reaction to us and who we are as humans. If we don't have someone there to help us process that, to help us find out the um, the factual evidence. And even, you know, depending on your age, you, you just can't understand that. You may not be at the developmental level to fully understand that. And so, again, we internalize the things we don't understand. It must be about me. And that's obviously to keep us safe and things moving forward. So if this is something that we grow up with, if this is something that we see as an acceptable way to interact with us or, you know, obviously not interact with us as, as abandonment is it's leaving, um, if, if we see that as an acceptable way of someone being in our lives, um, we, we don't put up the boundaries that healthy, normal, um, neurotypical individuals are able to put up and navigate their lives with. So we might chase after, you know, that person who continuously uses us, abandons us, and then starts that cycle over again. Um, some narcissists obviously are, are, are doing that. Um, even if, though, you do grow up with a, a strong foundation, even if you do grow up with a healthy family, there are instances that we can come into in our young adult lives um, or even later in life where we find a partner that we want to be with or we find a friend or a best friend that we want in our lives forever and they just up out of nowhere leave. They leave us hanging, no explanation, nothing. Right, right. And ag right. again, when we don't understand something, we internalize it. So we make it about us. Well, I must have done something wrong because it's a problem for us to solve for ourselves so that we don't have to experience this again in life. However, other people's decisions oftentimes have nothing to do with us. And if you go back to uh, the quotes that Angie has been putting in from the four agreements, yeah. don't right. take anything personally, don't make assumptions, always do your best, those right there tell you directly what your responsibility is in the matter. You look at yourself. You, you hear your own genuine voice. It's not up to you to make sense of other people's actions, right? If you need to for your own healing, for your moving past it, that's a different story. But we don't necessarily have to have an answer from somebody in order to heal and move forward. We don't necessarily need to have that if we truly know ourselves and are genuinely in touch with our own inner voices and what we know to be true about ourselves. So abandonment can lead to very, very toxic choices as we seek to be accepted by others. Um, human beings are very, very, very social species. We need to be around other people. And at some point, people have labeled that as desperation. It's not desperate to need and want a human connection with someone else. We need that as part of our mental health and wellness. I talk about having support in your life. No matter who you are and where you are, there are ways to find support and have people in your life to connect mm. with, to share your human experiences with, to feel validated when we need to feel validated. That human connection and support is so integral in our uh, lives and experiences that we really do need that to function at our best. And to the degree that uh, that applies, that very statement, uh, the last part there, of how much we need to interact is different and varied for each person. Just like it would be if you were a toddler, uh, the care and nurturing you need uh, is different. Uh, for each child, it's the same for each teenager, each adult, each woman, uh, each man. Uh, finding that and really connecting, as you're highlighting, is something that individuals can do. Some feel that uh, they connect just comfortably. By watching your show, we have a, a number of other shows coming and have been on, and people feel connected to others. The point being, what you said, 
we need to associate with our own kind and what our own kind really is other human beings that will listen and, uh, as it were, uh, make us feel wanted. Um, a lot of people connect with you, Coach, uh, because you're able to do that. Uh, we have another coach here, the PAC coach, or at least has passed through. Uh, we have Veronica 619. Uh, Joseph Slattery, others uh, have passed through or are here now. We truly appreciate it. We are doing this as a show of improv. We're doing it off the cuff, which means I just did, did what? Three cards that somebody sent? I, I like your one, card. One, two, I'm three, excited. four, five, six, seven, eight more to go. But, um, hey, I just feel like going over here because I'm going to ask you this. Um, I'm going to read something from your page. It says, I am a solution-oriented person. That's a posting that you had. What is that posting all about? So I've been doing all these daily affirmations through my account. So anyone who is into practicing affirmations, you guys have to go and check that out. I'm going to be putting um, a new one every single day. That doesn't mean that you should necessarily be practicing different ones every single day. It just depends on your practice and the way that you do it. But these are all simply suggestions um, to help us move forward in our lives. Um, Are you saying it's an affirmation carousel or merry-go-round yeah. of information? Yes, sir, it is. It's um, like a refrigerator of affirmations. They can pull yeah. out whatever ingredients. It's a cupboard so of really affirmations. Think. I'm sorry, this is improv. I'll I just like keep going. <laughs> okay. in it's a cupboard of affirmations. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. Oh, that's that's perfect. It's a perfect way to describe it. Hello there to uh to to black girls getting their shift together. Oh, um, no. Please forgive me. I, I forgot your name. I was going to say your name, and I, I don't want to say the wrong one. She's saying hello to everybody there. So uh, okay. shift together is saying hello to everybody. And uh, Noni's sixty nine. Is that what that says? I think so. Yes. And uh, sixty six vet. Okay, we need to see the car. Yeah. We need to see the car. Okay, <laughs> you were saying. I was saying thank you guys so much for joining us and welcome to our mental wellness, mental health improv. Um, I'm going to say it actually one more time again about the free sessions that I'm offering to anyone and everyone who's here. Um, 30 minutes free chatting with me about anything you need to talk about. Um, oh, you got your answer there, Paxton. Her name is Ursula. Thank you so I much knew for it. joining I, us. I knew it was you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good name. You were talking um, about... Uh, your yeah, the free coaching session. So 30 minutes with me for free. Just DM me through my business page here on Instagram and we will set that up for you. Um, I want to talk to as many of you as possible. So please send me those messages and uh, don't um, don't wait any longer for for that. Oh, hi. Is that Noni's okay, 69? Yeah, geez. Okay, we'll Noni. get to that in just a second there, yeah. Noni. Thank you for putting that in. Ursula, thank you for giving me your name. Mona Brown, a big uh, hello to you, too. Matter of fact, a, a, a loving um, round of applause. <laughs> and cheers for everyone. <laughs> I appreciate you being here and uh, supporting Coach Jess uh, because, look, this is what uh, many have asked us for something different. They didn't. They get tired of seeing two people on a Zoom just talk to everyone about mental health. Uh, they wanted to have something more interactive uh, and not so well polished, as it were. They wanted it uh, as down to earth. So this is what you get: low budget show, <laughs> high caliber gas. Uh, so that's what we got right here. I I want to mention some. Correct me though, Coach. Um, by the way, everybody, please like. Comment, share, follow. Coach, what's your Instagram page? At Life Plus Coaching. Awesome. And <laughs> now I'm going to say something here. Correct me if I get it wrong. The Coach Jess Show email. Is there? Did I say it that right? It is. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, okay. Is um, it the Coach Jess Show at Gmail? I told you guys this is improv. We didn't practice to do it. We, or this is all spur of the moment here. Uh, the coach just show at gmail.com is what I have here, but, yes. uh, it looks like I'm reading the old note that I had. So I just got to make sure I got it right. Did I say that right? Yes. If you and... need to email coach Jess and you want to talk to her, schedule an appointment, uh, get your free session. Anybody that shows up in this show 
uh, we'll get that with the coach. Anything offhand, if you want to talk to her about a show idea, anything like that, if you want to do a one-on-one counseling, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, don't stalk the coach because um, she's got a crew over there in, in Canada mm-hmm. and they make, you know, they protect her. Go ahead, coach. You're going to say something else. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that, that you feel safe here, Noni69. So I just want to uh, address this because that is, you know, a big a big deal and a big breach of trust in a life coach. You want to you want to read it? I'll read it. I'll read it real quick before you say perfect, it because uh, anybody watching in back may not know what right. we're looking at. But uh, Noni69 says, "I believe my life coach has crossed the line and is stalking me inappropriately." Through my accounts, he is disturbing me. Please, someone help me. So, mm-hmm. go right ahead. So, my first suggestion would be to find out if they are um, the, uh, a part of any kind of coaching regulatory body. So, we do have some um, regulatory bodies that life coaches can sign up with so that they're being, um, you know, made to stick with certain standards and ethics, um, that they don't do things like this, obviously, and there are disciplinary actions that can happen. So, Nani's if you can find out, um, if you signed a contract with this person, they should have their regulatory body information in that contract. Contact them and let them know what's going on. Um, you can also let any of the social media um, pages or websites know um, yeah. about the inappropriate behavior. Obviously block them um, from all the accounts that they're coming up with, but they may be able to stop them from creating new accounts to continue doing this with. Um, so check into that um, and 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 find out if they're able to at least stop him from creating more accounts, and then you can um, finally block the ones that are there. And 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 finally, um, if it is something that is scaring you for your safety, contact your local authorities and without, uh, without, and let without a know, doubt, mm-hmm, let them know what's yeah. going on. If you don't want to call as an emergency, most local authorities have a non-emergency line that you can call and find out um, what the best move would be for you i am not a law enforcement agent and so i can't speak to what they would recommend but i do want to make sure that you are safe and um, that you feel safe so that would be my suggestion for you i think that's going to be probably your best bet and probably going to get you the most answers on what you are able to do um, with the law there on your side so without a doubt i gotta stop saying that Uh, (laughs) so we want to make sure that uh, everyone knows we literally don't have a prepared show today. We are just on. <laughs> we are just literally just here on with you uh, with a few uh, words that were dropped off to us, either via email or through my DMs. Uh, people wanted us to talk about today because we had said two weeks ago, me, me goofing off with my big mouth, said, hey, let's just have a show where it's all improv. We make it up as we go. Um, and so here we Threw some lights together today, and uh, I shaved my head, so that's why I have a beanie on. I gave up being cool when I was 20. That's like 40 years ago, guys. So I okay. don't have it on because I'm trying to be cool. I'm I cold. I'm old you, and I'm cold. Go ahead. You look like such a cool like club DJ when you had the music playing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the headphones on. I was like, uh, <laughs> my ears are cold. I can't wear my muff. <laughs> All right. So um, we've been... Uh, I've been keeping an eye on something, and I'll just say it. You may see it in uh, what's being written here from Angie. Angie was actually driving, now that I'm finding this out, and I feel bad, and talking to us, per se, at the same time. (laughs) Uh, She has the book that we're going to start discussing right now. Again, all of this is improv, uh, everybody, all impromptu. Uh, Angie has a book. Let me scroll back up here to all of the comments in our show. Get back up here. Here we go. Uh, Angie says that she has just received a book entitled The Four Agreements. Uh, We have asked her to highlight the four agreements for us uh, so that we can touch on them a little bit more before we end the show today. Uh, She's uh, letting me know. She had let me know that she was just getting home and now she's arrived. I'm giving everybody the edited version. (laughs) And she says here, "Okay, I am finally not driving and can read all the comments. Uh, from the book, uh, you have to stop doing these when I am driving home <laughs> on Saturdays. Okay, that is totally improv. I didn't even, I don't do my normal reading where I kind of like check it out before I let it come out of my mouth. I just read that. I'm glad there were no bad words in that. But um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna work on making sure the show works around when you're driving home, Angie. Not 
Okay. So, oh, thank you for saying that, though. Uh, Noni, uh, in your situation dealing with someone who is harassing you or quote unquote stalking you, um, I I am glad that we were able to give you that information. You mentioned that relaxes me, that you are alive. I feel safe. Um, thank you for saying that. And uh, again, shift together is talking with uh, leave no contact, saying hello to them. Ursula is here, and um, I want to get to Mo. Mo, if you don't mind, I just want to tell you, I've got to read this. I don't know if you saw this already, Coach. Mo says, it's been difficult for me to find a therapist who actually knows what narcissism entails. It will definitely, I will definitely schedule an appointment with Jess. Uh, and then she says, therapists who deal with narcissist behavior should be aware of terms like flying monkeys, gaslighting, gray rocking, et cetera. There are so many frauds is uh, what she highlights. Uh, your thoughts. Yeah. So unfortunately there are a lot of, a lot of different kinds of therapists, a lot of different kinds of coaches. Um, everyone, I think for the most part, if you get into that field, you want to help people. And so you want to obviously do your best to help as many people as possible with whatever their issues might be. But um, we also, you know, uh, I was a trained, you know, I, I, I was a trained uh, counselor and therapist. And part of the ethics is knowing your limitations and knowing what you can and cannot do in the best interest of your client. So if you have someone coming to you and asking you for help and assistance in an area that you do not specialize in or that you have no experience in, it, it is a very important for you to be honest. And that person may choose to still work with you because they like the way you do things. They like the way you explain mm -hmm. things and they might be willing to work through that learning period for you. But if you have someone who is in desperate need of that immediate help, it's very important that you tell them what you can and cannot do, that you may or may not be able to help them with this issue to the depth that they might need that. And so it's very, very important in the helping profession that we know our limits and that we do not extend ourselves past them unless we're confident that we can help that person because we can do a lot more harm than good when we're not yeah. working in our proper lane. Matter, uh, matter of fact, um, Ursula kind of touches on something. This entire subject that we're talking about right now, uh, uh, someone that uh, you may reach out to in a professional aspect, uh, you're seeking help from them professionally, may not be able to assist you, is a common theme that uh, we deal with here on Narc Abuse TV Network. We often hear um, and a number of the professionals that I've mentioned this to, that people say this, um, well, the running theme is the same. Uh, it's almost like you have to treat them um, like you're sending them to the grocery store. It's like you have to have a list that says, okay, I'm expecting this, this, I want to talk about this, this, this. Are you capable of doing that? Instead of telling them your story first, see if they are able to talk about those things, if they are not familiar with it then let them go. Uh, Ursula says secondary gaslighting is kind of the situation uh, that she sees it that way. Um, the book goddess is here. Ooh, the book goddess is here. The pack coach is here. Anne's here. Uh, Mo the chick uh, is agreeing with uh, uh, shift to, uh, to, with Ursula about secondary gaslighting. The book goddess says ethics, plain old fashioned ethics when it comes to a coach that is stalking or someone in a professional field stalking. Uh, a young woman who is seeking help. Uh, go ahead, read something that you want to read. Read something that I want to read. Let's see here. Well, I I love talking about ethics. I really do. That is something I think that is massively missing in the coaching field um, because it's not necessarily government regulated or um, college regulated yet at this point. Coaching. Um, it's very important that you talk to your coach about their degrees, their diplomas, whatever kind of education they might have. It's very important that you ask them if they have training in ethics. Um, and even you can ask them what ethics they hold themselves to when they're working with clients. Um, mm -hmm. yep. For myself, I have an entire contract. I also have, you know, like what my whole business is about. And in that is included in the ethics that I abide by and follow it. Um, and that to me is, is almost more important, if not as important, as the content that you're familiar with as yeah. a helper. Um, because, yeah. you know, you can learn more things about that, but if you don't know what ethics you need to be holding yourself as, at a standard yeah. to, then you're kind of lost before you even start. 
um, because you don't know that, you know, you're going to necessarily be cared for in a proper manner as that client um, yeah. if this person doesn't, you know, believe in or follow through with those ethics. So due diligence, the same thing we would do if somebody's going to pick a lifelong partner. Um, sometimes we can end up doing, well, more homework and research to make a meal than we will for someone we can get help from. So, Mo, uh, I'm glad you've done the work, and I'm glad you're bringing this to everyone's attention. Uh, this needs to be something that everyone needs to keep an eye on. Uh, Mo, thank you for doing that. Um, Anne is saying, do you think a therapist that specializes in childhood trauma and narcissistic abuse is a must? That, In other words, you're saying if they need to do both, uh, I'm a little lost. And you can add some more, unless coach. You're smarter than I am. Go ahead. I wouldn't say that. You got, yeah, can you got, you, you got Canada wisdom. We have different specialties. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I ain't got no specialty. Girl, don't try to be nice to me. Thank you, Anne, for the compliment. Yes. I appreciate that. I saw that earlier. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, Anne, thank you so much again. Yeah, this question is really important. I think it, it is very individual-based. So, if, for instance, um, I am going and seeking a professional to help me with childhood trauma issues, that in and of itself is a very, very specific and specialized field. There is a lot of extra training um, that people go through to be trauma therapists, and even mm. more so when it's about childhood. Um, so it's very important, I feel, as it was for my healing, I'll put it that way, um, to see a child trauma therapist um, when, when I was doing my healing. Even better so if you can have that as, the, as a child who is experiencing trauma to be able to work with the therapist um, close, as close as possible to that traumatic incident, that's ideal, obviously. Um, to have them be a specialist in childhood trauma and narcissism at the same time would depend, mm -hmm. I feel, um, if that is something that you've identified yourself, a previous professional that you've worked with has identified as an issue in that trauma, um, as okay. either a secondary or, you know, co concurrent same base issue. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of time, childhood trauma might not necessarily have to do with a narcissist. It simply could be someone ignorant to the fact that what they're doing is going to cause harm. Someone who also didn't have that information, education when they were growing up or in their family. Um, I'm not saying this as an excuse. I'm just saying if we don't have the information to identify that that's what we need, then we can't go out and look for it. So it would be, I think, would have to come up in conversations with that professional. I think seeing yeah. someone as a child trauma specialist would, for me, trump them having a specialty in narcissism. That kind of can come along with working in the trauma field because you do see a lot of people who have been abused, um, trampled on in toxic experiences with narcissists. And so that often kind of comes hand in hand, even though it's not necessarily labeled as such. Um, yeah. but I feel like you get to decide what you want out of the person you work with and you get to decide what you need no matter what. And so it doesn't matter what I say, whatever someone as an individual feels they need when they collect all the information they can, then that's what they need. Yeah. Not everyone we see with a title attached in front or behind their name is going to be the person that helps us just as surely as everyone that may call themselves a mom or father may not really live up to their responsibility. So too can happen even in a professional field. Um, again, everybody, this is not the normal coach Jess show where we are well prepared and have uh, an idea of where we're going. Um, we have no idea. We just got, I got stuff over here and over <laughs> there because we said we were going to do a show that's simply an improv show on mental health. We just take in whatever you got and you give us. And, uh, at this moment I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, allowing um, Angie to put her last point up because she's highlighting four points uh, from a book that uh, she just received. And we're going to go over those uh, in just a moment. Um, when it comes to, I'm going to, we're going to touch on Noni's uh, um, point in just a moment. And uh, we're going to look at uh, Angie's points that she's been putting in the chat. We're going to pull those up, um, but I'm going to turn to, Go ahead. Sorry, just for one second, because Anne added something up here. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, she added another comment that childhood trauma, you're more um, susceptible uh, to narcissists. And that can be true simply because, as I've spoken to before, 
as mm -hmm. children, as we're developing. Um, we're also learning what love looks like. We're learning what relationships look like, what care looks like. And so if, if we have traumatic relationships with our parents who are supposed to be showing us what love we can expect from this world, and that love is full of abuse and toxicity, then that's what we're going to look for when we go out into the world on our own. Um, we actually might look for that even to get out of that household itself as abused children or neglected children. And so it's very important that, you know, when, you know, we, we see our kids playing with their friends, we see, you know, we meet our, our, our kids, friends, families. It's yeah. important to know as a parent what those things yes. look like, even if your child yes. themselves are not experiencing it. It's so yep. important that as a society, we come together and we protect the most vulnerable beings in it. And that is our children and our neighbor's children. And sometimes they need to be protected from their own families. And that is the sad truth. But um, I think we all need to have at least a, a semblance of information about what trauma and abuse looks like or um, can present itself as. What actual care looks like is what you highlighted. Uh, what it actually looks, tastes, smells, feels like to be cared for is not the common thing. It is a dying thing in many families. Uh, instead of it being shown a loving, caring from the top down, father down, many are finding out they have not and are not experiencing that. So it is very important uh, for all of us to be exemplary when it comes to taking care, not just of ourselves uh, in a balanced way, but also those that are entrusted uh, to our care, which is our children, as you mentioned, the most vulnerable, and showing honor to those who are the second most vulnerable, which is our elderly, and making sure that they receive the honor and respect that they deserve. Absolutely. It comes into um, us being here 56 minutes. Um, again, this is Canada, California, having uh, this open discussion with you. And improv on mental health means pretty much you're running the show. And I'm trying to see there, did, see here, did Angie get her last one in? I did. Let me scroll back down. Yep, she did. Uh, yeah, she did. She got it in. So we're going to get to that, Angie, in just a second, and you can jump in and be a part of that discussion and a part of the show. If anyone here, um, I'm just going to go full on improv again. As I said earlier, if you want to turn your camera on uh, and you want to torture, I mean, you want to talk to uh, Coach Jess, uh, just, <laughs> just wow. feel free to do so. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if you get out of hand, you go ghetto on us, I'll cut you <laughs> off. Uh, I'll cut your camera off. All right, so uh, anyhow, um, keep that in mind. Uh, Mo the Chick says, I'm thankful for this podcast. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, it is, I'm actually kind of nervous when I start reading now because I'm literally trying not to pre-read it before it comes out of my mouth. Uh, so I'm editing as I go. I'm thankful for this podcast. Uh, it is one of only a few places I can com communicate with others who know what narc abuse is. So thank you for saying that. Everyone, please like, comment, share, follow uh, Mo. And if she accepts you, then connect with her and be a source of encouragement and a community to each other. Um, we also, uh, well, I also wanted to do a show on Saturday uh, with Jess uh, because one of the things that I considered was a few people wrote me and said that they wanted to have a show like this on the weekend after they did custody swap, you know, after the kids were picked up and they saw their narcissistic ex and they weren't going out to go with their friends and they just wanted something uh, to do and to watch. Uh, and you have had an impact, my friend. You have had a huge impact and a number of people who love uh, watching you. Um, Ursula says, I agree. Everyone should research their attachment styles, uh, which is very important. Thank you, Ursula, for mentioning that. Everyone, please feel free. Uh, to like, comment, and follow her as well. Anne says, very helpful, and thank you. And uh, Noni69, Noni, I'm just tearing that up, uh, says, thank you, uh, Mo. Uh, Mo is very encouraging. Anne is as well. Everyone, Ursula, uh, all helping each other. Uh, so if you, right now, normally we stop this show in a few more minutes. We're not doing that. Uh, Coach just had no idea I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do that. Because we normally stop on time, per se. That's true. It's an improv. <laughs> we'll just go past that. We don't know until the old man passes out, maybe. So anyhow, um, we're going to keep going here, and uh, we're going to get back to Ang what Angie has for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Angie says to Mo, I have said that very often. 
the best teachers are the ones that have lived it. And um, I just want to say, you've lived it, right, Jess? Mm -hmm. I have. I certainly yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. We don't. Uh, if you've noticed, we don't sit here and talk uh, about private lives uh, on this show in regards to Jess, uh, because she's here to offer her services uh, for you. Uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, I would turn my camera on if I didn't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If I didn't look so rough at the moment. I'm sorry. I tried not to laugh when I said that. All right. Way to go, Mo. That's a pretty good. That's pretty good. You should have a shirt that says I look I look so rough at the moment or something. So I would I she would. OK. Hey, look, you know what? Um, then we'll have something for you next time, Mo. Next time we do this. Uh, here I go. Thinking of something else. Next time we do this, Mo, um, why don't you DM me, and I'm going to give you a call-in number where you can call into the show. You don't have to show your face. Uh, you can call into the show. Matter of fact, if anybody else wants to do that, just uh, go ahead and email me or DM me if you would like to be a call-in guest to the Coach Jess show, in which uh, you can call us here at the show we will pump you into the show, and they, everyone can hear your voice, and you'll be able to talk to us and be a part of the show. If you would like to do that, here we go. I just keep making up stuff. It's like two it. weeks, it's two, two shows in a row. <laughs> if you would like to be a part of the show, and you don't want to show your face, you don't want to turn your camera on, we will give you our phone number so that you can call into the show, and everyone will be able to hear you. Yes. There is no profanity for the show. <laughs> we don't discuss religion, politics, or racism, and a number of other things. The show is about a neutral stance in regards to mental health, and if you need more, you can talk to Coach Jess. So there are some of the parameters. I will tell you more if you want to be a part of the show that way. Go ahead, Coach. Anything? No, that is perfect. Sums it all up very, very well. That is super exciting that we get to do that call-in show. Um, Just making would, it up as I go. I would we make love it up to as hear all your voices. And then you, you can actually get our answers in real time instead of waiting for it to get submitted. And <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> what is Anne says, don't, don't. Oh, my goodness. You guys are funny. I got the <laughs> best audience ever. They you got the best audience. They are too funny down to earth. And uh, that's why I love finding guests and having this show and others. Anne says, don't worry. I can't. I'm in bed in hair rollers, Mo. Okay. I don't know why I want to see that. I just want to see that. Just to see. we should have. We should have. Selfie you time. just take a picture. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Actually, Anne, you just sent me a picture, and trust me, your hair looks absolutely beautiful, my friend. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna post it too, unless you tell me don't. But thank you so much. She shows support for the show uh, in front of others and behind the scenes as well. All of you do. Um, she is Fran 808 says, have you ever touched on being in a relationship with a self-aware narcissist? Okay. I, ha I have kind of touched on that. And if you go to YouTube, I'm, we're not on YouTube yet, but uh, narc abuse TV is on YouTube on other people's pages, interviews that we've done. But Sam Vaknin was on the show and he touched on it a little bit. And a few others have done the same about being in a relationship with a self-aware narcissist. It has been a topic that has been discussed. I don't know. We've had almost, I don't know what it is, 400 episodes now. One of these days I'll get uh, the correct count. <laughs> it's been over 350 episodes we've done in a year here. Um, and we have discussed it a number of times. But feel free to share, Fran, if you'd like to do so. Um, <laughs> Ursula says no. Well, no. Don't stop the show. We want more. Okay, Ursula, <laughs> just kick in some ideas and stuff because uh, you got your show as well. Uh, and feel free to drop any ideas. Uh, Angie, we're going to get to what you have to say. I have to read one of the cards uh, to Jess, and uh, you can take us down uh, this road. The road is very briefly, feel free to discuss. The word that they wanted us to talk about is trust. In other words, um, starting all over again. Not just Rebuilding. trusting yourself, yeah. but literally trusting someone else to give your heart to. People say, that, well, essentially, a few people talked about they find it a struggle to trust again after they've been dealing with someone who took advantage of their emotions. And technically, even financial abuse. But go ahead. Yeah, trust is, uh, it's a huge thing. It, it 
it can make or break a relationship. You know, it can make or break a lot of different things. Um, being unable to trust others would make your world such a small and specific looking type experience. Um, I remember before I was fully healed um, and I re was realizing my childhood trauma and all these things were kind of coming to light, I lost complete trust in the whole world. I was fully agoraphobic for a brief period of time where I barely left my home. Um, I found it very, very hard to even trust myself. And I think that was actually the worst part of the whole situation was that uh, my reality was so blown apart um, that the trust I had in myself and my own decisions was corrupted as well. And I think that does happen with a lot of narcissistic or abusive relationships. And I know you said not just trusting yourself, but um, that has to come before you can trust other people. If we uh, trust others before we trust ourselves, that is how we get led astray. That is how we get um, taken for a ride. That is how more people will take advantage of us. And that is because when you trust someone else's instincts um, above your own and you don't know for a fact that that person has your best interest at heart, then they can essentially get you to do whatever they want. Wow. Right? Yeah. So we, we need to have that base trust in ourselves. And the, the biggest thing that trauma does is it, it takes away that trust we have in, in the world, the, in the connections we build, um, and in ourselves. And that can be, cut, be because maybe this trauma happened because of decisions we made or things that we didn't do. And, and again, we go and internalize those things that we don't fully understand, and we blame ourselves, and we try to protect ourselves by just going to the extreme of cutting off all that trust and, and basically waiting and saying, like, oh, well, I don't trust anything or anyone or even myself. So they're like, I can't do anything. I can't move forward. I can't leave my comfort zone. I can't, you know, like I sat on a couch and played Mario Kart for three months. Like it, it, it's such a wild, wow. wild place to yeah. be when you can't trust people in the world. Yeah. It's terrifying. It's yeah. truly terrifying. And, and that fear makes it impossible for us to act and move forward and get through. It can be hard even to try, find a therapist when you don't trust anybody. It can be hard to find a coach. It can be hard to find a doctor. And so that self-trust we really need to begin with in order to be able to trust others or at least trust ourselves to be able mm -hmm. to discern who we can and cannot trust. And right. once that trust has been broken, if we do blame ourselves, you know, we, we, we need to create an action plan to be able to rebuild that trust and move forward. And, you know, a lot of that, a lot of times it can even come down to something as simple as, making small commitments to yourself every day and showing up and fulfilling those commitments for yourself. That is a very simple and straightforward way to begin that rebuild of the self-trust. Not always to step into that if we never had an actual caregiver that gave us a beautiful example of how to do that. It can be challenging it would be safe to say that a person needs to be careful then not to take it personal and attack oneself just because you don't know what the next step is that you're going to take. But you're saying an action plan is important. If somebody wants to get in an action plan on how to move forward when you have trust issues, uh, whether it be uh, uh, remarrying, uh, starting again, as it were, and trusting others in the family, or a number of other things, feel free to reach out for some coaching from Coach Jess. Feel free to reach out to Coach Jess so she can work with you. Don't, well, don't let money and what you think is going to cost you get in the way because, Coach, you're saying you will do it for how much again? For free. For free. For half an hour, we can discuss anything and everything that you need some direction or support in absolutely for free. Um, and I try to make my services as, as accessible as possible. So, when we can come up with a plan about how we can move forward together, we can discuss every single thing that you might have some concern about. Okay. That's the main reason why you see Coach Jess. This was not because we're neighbors, but we are neighbors because we have the same mindset about getting this in front of you and uh, she's willing to offer her services. And uh, I trust you. 
Uh, so I want you to know, everyone, she is available to you. Um, I, I'm looking at the book goddess here. She says, it may lead to a poor fit for support. Uh, feel free to expand on that if you'd like to, uh, Sherry. Um, sometimes, um, well, Coach, what does that statement mean to you instead of me saying it? Sorry, what was that statement? I'm just trying to look at I'm not sure if I'm getting the newest comment popping up on my screen here. It's uh, the comment from the book goddess is it may lead to a poor fit for support. Uh, feel free to tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, by the way, please like, comment, share, follow the book goddess. You got to get the book for the price of a pizza. Uh, you will get uh, some some really good enlightenment if you've uh, dealt with uh, domestic abuse. Uh, sexual abuse and a number of other things. You'd uh, you'd have to take the book. Of course, she was a guest on the show. A guest on the show. Um, Shift together. Uh, Ursula says, "Great points, Jess. Great points, um, Coach. If you don't mind, I'm going to get to Angie. Yes. Uh, I'm going to scroll all the way back up here and get to. Welcome to this improv show here <laughs> on North Abuse TV Network. Uh, Angie, here we go." NPD Recovery Red Flags. That's Angie's page. The book, I'd have to scroll back up. Do you remember the title of the book? I, I totally the forgot. Four Agreements. Say that one more time in your uh, very mm -hmm. volume up voice again, please. What was that? The Four Agreements. Okay. So the Four <laughs> Agreements uh, from the DJ from Canada there. Uh, <laughs> she, she, the first one, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth. Uh, what else you got there? And uh, she's putting something else there. Okay. You want to run with that one? And then we'll do number two. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of speaking about that earlier, being impeccable with your word. And again, it's just having an authentic speech essentially is, is not misrepresenting yourself. But not only that, um, as we, we heard um, Angie add from the quote from the book, um, it's also about not using your word against others, including yourself. Um, it's about, you know, speaking that positivity into life instead of that focus on negativity that a lot of us tend to um, migrate yes. to. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it, it's, everywhere media all like all they want to talk about mm. is the bad stuff going on and of course we want to be informed but there needs to be some balance with with the good with the good that's going on in the world and so one way to um, move yourself from thinking mostly negatively to the positive is through mm. gratefulness um, practices and so that can be as simple as waking up in the morning listing five things you're grateful for and and honestly that can be as basic as having clothes on your back food in your belly a roof over your head a car to drive and a job to go to like it it's there are so many things we have to be grateful for that we don't consider on a daily basis and it can be very easy for our minds to move into that negativity if first thing in the morning you wake up and stub your toe now the rest of your day all you see are the things that could cause you pain right Instead of, okay, I stubbed my toe, but I still have a nice warm breakfast to eat. I still have coffee to bring with me to work, right? It, it's a different mindset. And it's very important um, that we understand that where our focus goes is where we live. So if our focus is positive, we're, we can be and, and have positivity. But if our focus is negative, then that's where we're stuck. Our uh, perspective, our attitude, the way we see things. Of course, a lot of it developed during childhood. Mm -hmm. We can end up becoming the person who raised us instead of the person and the potential that we could be in the way we view the world. So overall, the mindset is very important is what you're highlighting to us. Yes. That was number one. Uh, by the way, uh, the book goddess says lack of trust can lead to poor support. That's what she was highlighting to us yeah. uh, in her statement. Yeah, number absolutely. two. Number two. Uh, scroll back up here. Number two is don't take anything personally. Uh, Angie writes from the book, The Four, what again? The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements. Don't uh, take anything personally. 
feel free to turn your volume volume up. I don't know what just happened here. Maybe it's just me. Maybe uh, a, bit a little closer. bit, yeah, a little bit more. Maybe it's just me. It says, "Don't take anything personally. Nothing, nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others." Go right ahead. Be my guest. I love that one. That one is, it's so important. And it, it again, goes to that mindset. Um, this, you know, two different people can have the same experience of walking through a mall and hearing a group of people giggling as they walk by. And one person that can send them into, you know, a panic attack and, and feeling like they're being judged or shamed or embarrassed. And the other person just walks right by and doesn't even, you know, pay much attention. Oh, they're having a good time. Great. And that, that has to do with how we see ourselves, um, how we see ourselves interacting in the world and the almost the significance we put on others' opinions of us. Um, first and foremost, though, many other people only experience a sliver of us. People at work only experience us at work. Our friends only experience us in those social settings that we allow them to. Our family only experiences us when we're with our family. So it's very, mm -hmm. very compartmentalized how people experience you. And not to mention, you can never, ever know what minute fraction of someone else's life you are, right? And, and, and how much you matter in someone else's life. So walking past and, and worrying so much about what a group of strangers is thinking about you, what does that add versus what does it take away? Um, so it, it takes away that confidence. It strips you of, you know, having that, um, that confidence in yourself that you know someone's giggle can take away like so immediately it it's just so important that we try to remember that we are not as important as we think we are and i know that sounds like a really bad statement but it's wait, so freeing wait, hold, it's so hold that thought hold that thought <laughs> wait hold on hold, hold that thought <laughs> okay you got one over there come on give me something you got come on you got what you got We are not as important as we think we are, no. and we need to hold on to that as we ignore the things that have nothing to do with us. Exactly. I just made that up. Yeah, it's Tip true. Tip that Tip is go ahead. You were going to say. Good Paxton quote. No, it's absolutely <laughs> yeah. true. Hey, here we go. Whole new show. Good Paxton Seriously. quote. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's uh, important. It's important we realize, you know, that someone who's making fun of us may have only ever seen us at our worst. Someone who's spreading rumors about us only knows, you know, 1% of the life we live. And it's, it's really, again, you live where you focus. And if you put your focus on that, then you're always going to be living uh, for the approval of other people and for the, you know, permission of other people. And that is no way to live, especially not anything authentically. Yeah, living for the permission of other people, it ain't going to work that way. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be good. Uh, we wouldn't want our children to do that. We would, we don't even want our pet to do that. You know, we want our pet to <laughs> to get along with us. Imagine if the pet goes like, I wonder if my master loves me. Oh, my master doesn't talk to me today. You know, yeah. but we can find ourselves bouncing around in our head uh, and that can happen. But uh, you mentioned you can offer individuals an action plan. And uh, how much does it cost them again? Uh, free, zero, nothing. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're doing here, people, 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 as uh, we're making sure that you know you don't have to suffer with the same type of shows and people that you deal with. Come here on a Saturday, uh, you will see and hear something that hopefully will encourage you. You'll find it to be positive, informative, and of course, come on now, I'm a guy here. All guys are goofy. You're going to get some fun out of it at some point, <laughs> and uh, you're going to get uh, some support and encouragement from Coach Jess. Number three. A point number three out of the book entitled, this is all an improv show. We're not planning this. The audience is running the show today. What is number, um, sorry, the name of the book? The <laughs> name, Four name the Agreements. <laughs> the Four Agreements. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I just want to throw this in. Um, Sherry, the book goddess, everyone, please like, comment, share, follow the book goddess. Uh, she says, do your research on the coach or therapist ahead of time. Uh, so she, uh, just uh, a, a comment that I, I didn't read to you earlier, but please keep that in mind. Uh, point number three out of the book, 
that Angie is sharing with us here online that she has, don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. Uh, with just uh, this one, I, I we've lost, I'm sad to say we lost the rest of the comment there. No. Yep, we lost. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm going to read that one more time. Point number three here on this Improv Saturday on mental health. Uh, the audience is running the show. <laughs> running the show, baby. Uh, don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions, to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. Your thoughts? Yeah, that is a huge one as well. I was actually uh, writing a post earlier this morning that you will see in the future on my um, Instagram page here about uh, assumptions really being uh, kind of a betrayal to yourself. You're making decisions and moving forward in life without the facts when you're making assumptions. You are um, providing input and information from others that you don't know for sure that that's what you would be getting. You're essentially creating this situation that doesn't actually exist yet. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's really up to us as decision makers in our own lives to also be fact finders. And if we can't find the facts to make the decisions for, then we need to find someone who can direct us to those facts. Um, so that is a very, very important thing to do in any situation in life. Ask questions. Ask for the yes or the no. Um, ask why. Demand an explanation. You have every right to know the answer to your questions, no matter where you are and in what form they come. Um, honestly, any teaching situation, any job, any place where you have someone who is an authority figure to you should also understand that their role is to answer your questions. Their role is to explain things as if you are, you know, brand new on this earth. And if they don't yeah. have that passion to do that in that position, then they shouldn't be there, yeah. and they are going to harm that quality of learning. No one, no one feels comfortable being talked down to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always beautiful to be talked with, uh, discussed with, expressed with. But when we find we're in a position, or we may be giving it to someone else, that we're talking down to them, that's never going to turn out well. Here, we're getting this, uh, a really strong, positive uh, statement and suggestion. Ask the question. Express what you want. Find the space, the emotional and intellectual space that is going to help you have stability and sustainability in your relationship uh, when you're dealing with other individuals. It's not always easy to do that when you're dealing with someone who's going through something or doesn't really see your value. Um, you will have to make that call when you're in that moment. Uh, but the reality of it is those three points we've just discussed uh, are very important. Mm -hmm. If you just got here, <laughs> we, yes, would normally have ended this show almost 20 minutes ago. But we decided to keep going for a little bit longer here because, um, well, um, we can. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, this is an improv mental health show. This started uh, two weeks ago when uh, I said, let's do something like that. So that's kind of what we're doing. I got to talk about what Ursula said quite a while back. So here's the rundown, everybody. I said, it's a little too late right now, but I said much earlier, if you want to have your camera on, feel free to do so. And a few people said that they couldn't. Ann says that she can't because she's in bed with hair rollers on. <laughs> Um, Mo said that she couldn't because I, 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 I'm not going to scroll back. I think she said she's a hot mess or something. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm probably saying it wrong. Something like that. And <laughs> Hey, I'm a guy. I can say things wrong. That's what I do. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> why we got to be the first ones to forgive because we're asking for the same thing. So, so anyhow, I'm just making this up. <laughs> so, so, uh, but I'm trying to get to Ursula. Ursula said, and I didn't read this one, but Ursula says, she said that I can't either, that is, turn her camera on, because <laughs> she says 
I still have my bonnet on. And she's got three happy laughing faces. <laughs> okay. I have sisters. I have daughters. I'm not afraid of females. But what's a bonnet? Isn't that the thing you wear on Sunday? I think it can either be a reference to a no. hat or a head wrap. A head wrap? Mm -hmm. So she's a head wrapper? She's the head. She's the head. She's I'm just messing with you, Ursula. It's <laughs> wrong with me. This is like a bad episode of Hee Haw or the Red Green Show. By the way, do you know what the Red is... Green Show is? I do know what the Red Green Show is. <laughs> Fun fact one of my friend's fathers actually built all the cars and the sets for it. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, go look it up. Google it. It's a great Get on YouTube. Canadian show. That is my number one, one of finest. number one Canadian show I love is the Red Green Show. <laughs> It's Every incredible. now and then, I gotta watch it. If 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 I'm feeling like oh, I don't feel like getting out of bed, what am I gonna do today to watch <laughs> just to get me just laughing? I'm not saying depressed, but I guess I could watch it if I was feeling feeling that. But the Red Green Show is the bomb. This has it's nothing to do about what we're talking about. That's why it's an improv show because we can. <laughs> it's just episode. so wholesome. What episode is this, by the way? Episode. Hold on. Seven. Oh, seven heaven. Is it? So, okay. Episode number seven. <laughs> okay. so episode number seven. Uh, let's see here. This is episode number seven and a pilot. So we've done a total of eight different uh, uh, appearances here on Instagram, on IGTV, Instagram's YouTube. Uh, and we've done this. Okay, what do we got here? Everybody's saying stuff. We got one more. Uh, I can't say that word here. Um, so um, I love you guys, but a family show. Um, <laughs> reality tunnel okay i kind of like the that's way to go one. pack coach uh if you're wondering uh how to get a hold of the pack coach that's the underscore p period a dot or whatever c uh under, oh, underscore okay i'm messing it all up the pack coach <laughs> is what it is reality tunnel that's like you should hashtag that that should be a shirt that's it a should say reality tunnel and then the pack coach right underneath it um very good point she's talking about making a point um i'm skipping stuff aren't i yep <laughs> uh feelings are not facts is what ursula says Absolutely. and warrior in the world says love you all back at you my man here here we go here we go we'll do this right here here we go here we go Ow! that's the wrong button oops <laughs> I'm, seriously i did not mean to do that to you my friend that's not what I meant to do. I'm not trying to be violent, bro. Seriously, man. I let, don't, don't, don't let anger yeah, alone. That's not what I was trying to do. I'm sorry. Time. I meant to hit. You got one? Can <laughs> yeah. you give him something to awesome. prop? Yeah, do that one more time first. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I meant to give you, my man. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got a whole bunch that's here. We got one more point out of the book uh, that we need to do, and we're going to read a bunch more because... Uh, you haven't said I got to go yet. No, I I'm here for this. <laughs> you haven't said, and we just, hey, we're here, guys. So, you know, hey, if you bored and you got nothing better to do and you watched everything on Netflix, uh, we're going to get to uh, the book goddess there. She's got something down there that she just popped up. I'm going to go back here to what everybody else got going on, what you got going on. Uh, again, low budget show, high caliber guests. <laughs> uh, we're not here for likes, comments, follows, and all that kind of stuff. We're here for your comments. <laughs> so I just said not for We're here. All right. So here we go here. Let's see here. What we got? Um, I'm sorry. The bonnet comment is funny. Hair rollers, <laughs> bonnet. You guys, Mo started it all. She's the one that started it. Okay. So if you're bored and looking at two people on, um, you could be bored right now. That's totally up to you. But. Uh, if you're bored and watching two people on Zoom talk about how great they are and how great their uh, programs are and their books, thank you for stopping here because you're going to see something that has high production value and hopefully very strong encouragement for you. Uh, but other than that, um, we're a goofball. Ball. <laughs> a goofball, I am. Uh, it. Uh, let's see here. Ready? You ready? You ready, Always. Coach? Okay, here we go. I'm afraid... Uh, he has uh, control of what I read and do on social media. He has me feeling psycho if I investigate. I stay uh, away from stuff like that. I have reached out to him 
on DM him, totally stopped answering me. Um, this is uh, Noni69. Um, I guess you're still discussing that aspect of dealing with someone who is uh, a coach. Uh, well, we were able to highlight some points to keep in mind there when you're dealing with someone who is uh, harassing you, uh, who is a coach. Uh, please be very careful with that or without a doubt, contact the authorities uh, and go in that direction. Uh, we hope that can be helpful. Um, what does that say? It's a woman thing. Oh, for the bonnet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Way to go, man. Way to kick me to the curb on that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you, Mo. It's a woman thing. Okay. You all have the things that heroes are made of. Okay. That's very sweet, my friend. That's oh. warrior world. Give him one more. Give him one more. Give him one, one more. more. Hold on. I got an even better one. Okay. I love it. You guys are so great. <laughs> That's the, one of the best ones. I know. I love that one. Okay, here we go. Um, Warrior World, you motivated me to come out of my shell and start doing live chats. Yes, I saw you sent me something there, my friend. You did a live chat. Uh, we are we are here for each other. And uh, he's given love to the book goddess as well. Uh, the book goddess in... Oh, wait. Anne. We got to go to Anne. Anne says, I shall say good night. Thank you so much for a great show and helpful content. Take care, Jess and Praxton. And all of you uh, mind yourself. <laughs> hey, all of you mind yourself. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking man. to you right now. I <laughs> see you out there. Don't you be sitting there eating all that ice cream. Save some <laughs> of it for tomorrow. Or get two of them, one for each day. Every fitness coach that has been on the show is going to write me and say, Paxton, you shouldn't say that to people. <laughs> you should really stop trying to encourage people to have a sugar overload. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you get more clients. <laughs> Always working. Okay. Get those donuts. <laughs> no, get Eat popcorn and celery and like it. All right. Uh, we've never done a show like this. No, for I, like I have it. no common sense. Oh, wait, that's every day. And uh, <laughs> you're here just... Uh, giving me the kind Canadian laugh. Oh, that poor American. He's so lost. <laughs> He's so, that poor American. He's so lost. No, uh, no, no. It's almost as if we're doing a show prep in real time. All right. Um, the book goddess says, question, why are there so many therapists for children under 12 years old? Why are there so many? She's asking you, Jess, even addressed it to you. What do you mean uh, so many, like, in relation to how many adult therapists there are? I just need a little bit more context on that question, please. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What else we got here? Mo the Chick. <laughs> uh, Mo the Chick is laughing. She must be laughing at you because I'm the <laughs> serious one in this group. Obviously. <laughs> right. California, serious. West Coast. Okay, all right. <laughs> Enough of that ghetto talk. Uh, I sent you a request. I was going to wave. Um, the bonnet stuff. I'm just reading stuff now. It's an improv <laughs> show, you guys. Normally, I kind of screen these before I let the words come out of my mouth. Not today. Just don't put no profanity in there, guys. I love you, but don't, He'll don't read do it. that. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Write it to yourself. Uh, all right. So uh, here we go. Number four. Point number four from Angie. She has given us four points from the book entitled... The Four Agreements. Jam on, girl. Look at you <laughs> talking to your microphone, your microphone. Okay, number four. Always do your best. Uh, your best is going to uh, change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid. I hate that it gets cut off right there. Either that or you're just like totally teasing uh, Jeff and I. It's like, like you're right, cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. Yeah. All right, so always do your best is point number four. Mm -hmm. uh, your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best. And you, uh, you tell us the more. Oh, wait, there's more. Look at that. Right there. And you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. 
if you just tuned in or you've never passed here before and you accidentally, uh, I don't know, let all the uh, IG stories and stuff go and now you ended up in this live and going like, what are, what is going on with these people? <laughs> Uh, this is Canada and California Connection. Uh, Jess, the Coach Jess Show, she is uh, broadcasting to us from Canada. Uh, we're connected here and talking to social media uh, so that you can have an opportunity to have something different. Uh, you can see something that will be encouraging and positive. It will make you think. It may make you cry. But more importantly, it will make you reach out, hopefully, to Coach Jess. She's offering her services for free if you are an attendee to this live show. Uh, she's not selling anything. She's offering her services to you, and she will be of assistance to you if you need someone to talk to. Uh, if you feel like you're not enough, you feel like you're not worthy, if you have been betrayed by someone who has been narcissistically self-absorbed person taking advantage of your emotions, reach out to Coach Jess. It's all free. It's all free. All right, so again, do your best. Why? Because under any circumstances, by doing your best, simply do your best, you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. All yours, Coach. Yeah, so I think that is a very, very important statement. Um, all four of these, obviously, are designed to um, help you to live an authentic and whole life. Um, this one in particular is important because not just the acknowledgement that you are doing your best, but knowing that your best will change from second to second. Um, your best one day is not going to be the same the next day. And it's important that we still recognize we're doing our best in those circumstances, even if it doesn't look like the same thing, even if it doesn't look like someone else's best or, or our best even an hour before. Um, as long as we can genuinely and, and seriously feel that we are always giving our very best and doing our very best, then we can't really put ourselves down for not doing that. We can't, you know, judge ourselves for not giving it our all. Uh, but the most important part is that recognition that your best is going to look different constantly and consistently and that that's okay and that's normal and that's human not to beat yourself up when you're having a bad day and you can only get half the amount of stuff that you would normally get done accomplished. You know, you still got half that stuff done. And if that was your best that day, that is okay. And we need to make consideration and take consideration for that in how we plan our lives. We may have one day where we are completely on top of our game, 100% output, able to do anything, put out any fire. And the next day, you know, we can't get to that, so we're down on ourselves, but we have to make that acknowledgement that that's not going to be our best every day. That was our best that one day, and that's okay. That might be a very rare occurrence. That's not the threshold that we hold ourselves to now, right? That's not the threshold that we hold others to, because their bests look different than our bests. And so it is, you know, we, we really need to have that self-love and that self-acceptance that that best is going to look different, that it is acceptable for us to do less and still be just as worthy as when we were doing more. I hope that everyone has enjoyed themselves. If you see in the chat, by the way, thank you, Mo, for your words. Uh, I hate that the conversation, uh, or if it, it looks like it's lagging a little bit for some of you, uh, we are going to be uh, calling the show to an end uh, here in just a moment or two, but I have a few things. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to get prepared for the end <laughs> uh, to kind of end the show. The rest of it, trust me, it was spur of the moment. Trust me, it was. Uh, right, Coach? <laughs> oh, yeah. All of this. This has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and we have uh, gone, uh, I don't know, almost 40 minutes longer than we'd normally go. Uh, but I do want to say this. If you see the pack coach here, other coaches are here, the book goddess, uh, if you get her book, if you pick up her book, she offers coaching to you as well. Uh, many of you are here that offer your services. Uh, thank you, Coach Jess, for taking the lead. And uh, you know the work you put into when you're able to do these shows and us doing these shows together. I appreciate it. Uh, many of you that are passing through have never been here before or been here. Uh, you know uh, that uh, we are here on Saturdays so that you can reach out to Coach Jess and she makes herself available uh, so that you can work with her, she will work with you. 
I do want to get to this. I want you, Coach, mm-hmm. this is as close as we've been to prepared for me, not for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to pull something off your page, and I want you to kind of end the show with this, the thought in mind of something that you have here. Uh, you have a posting that says, I am reliable. Now, you have experienced childhood trauma and abuse. It's not up for constant discussion because it is a part of your private life, but you make yourself available for those. It is your specialty uh, who have gone through that. Many people don't feel that they are reliable or uh, a number of things. Many were told that really they have no worth, even at a young age, or felt like they were not seen and heard. Mm -hmm. You have a posting that says, I am reliable. Expand or expound on that. Why did you put that there and what does it mean for us? Yeah, so again, that's part of the the daily affirmation series that I've started. And I really began this affirmation series because I I have a little explanation there with all the ones that I put up. um, That we we so often get told by other people who we are and what we are and what we offer or don't offer. Um, But the, the only voice that is truly more powerful than any others is the voice inside your head and the one that you use to talk to yourself. Um, So if you know better, which you do, than some random person who insults you or slings something your way, um, you need to remind yourself that. Because we can have, you know, someone standing in our face and shouting at us and telling us we're all these terrible things, but you can think, you know, a lot faster than someone can speak at you. And so this is almost a protection, these daily affirmations, in a way, uh, it's a protection against that negativity from others. It's it's like that old adage saying, you know, you're in a you're in a boat and you know, anxiety or stress and trauma is all that water surrounding you, you're safe in that boat as long as it doesn't get in. Right. And it's about keeping, you know, keeping yourself strong, reminding yourself that. The things that get in are only the things you allow your, you allow to get in um, and, and that you can create these boundaries with these powerful words and affirmations that can almost encase you in your genuine self. It can allow these negative notions of who you are to just bounce off of that armor that you create out of these affirmations, out of the genuine honesty and authenticity of you. If you can believe and know who you are so strongly to your or that's who's going to come out. And no matter what has happened in your childhood, no matter what has happened in your young adult life, you get to decide who you are, not somebody else. And so practicing these daily affirmations like I am reliable, um, that can mean something different to other people. But what you're saying is I'm reliable in what that means to me, right? And so it's that same as building up that self-trust It's making these small commitments or doing these small actions every day that prove to us that we are reliable, not to others, to us, that we are committed to being that kind of a human being. We're committed to being reliable. We're committed to being there for the people that need us and the responsibilities that we take on and the commitments that we choose. When uh, you uh, come by Narc Abuse TV Network, Narcissism, Relationships, and Recovery, is discussed. But when you come here to see the specialty shows that we have, Hannah Speaks and a number of others that you will be seeing, but mainly the one who kicked it off for the entire network, which is the lady in front of me right now, Coach Jess. Uh, she sits on her throne, as it were. I call it that. She hates, she does it. She's so humble. But I, I say that she's on her red throne. Uh, she's the first one uh, to say yes to have a show here on Narc Abuse TV Network. In regards to relationships, resiliency, and recovery, what you have just experienced is us doing stuff off the cuff, as it were, (laughs) impromptu, improvisation, about mental health, where essentially you were running the show today. This is what you have asked of us here to do. You want to see something different in which, well, not like the big shows where you just sit there and have to take it. You can participate. And as you know, we try our best to go out and find those you want to see. Not everyone says yes, but we have Coach Jess. 
that's just as good as those others saying yes to us. So we will continue to have shows just like this in many different ways, different types of hosts and different types of guests, so that it will appeal to just about as many as possible. Free live shows for you to see. You don't have to sit there and feel you're not connected and you feel a little upset because of what you've gone through by being abused by someone else. Feel free to jump into the chat once we go live. If you need to talk to someone and the shows are not on, reach out to Coach Jess. Jess, your, your page, your coaching page is what? It is at Life Plus Coaching. And also, if you go to that bio, you can click on my link there and uh, join my Facebook group. Um, if this is not enough to quench your thirst of the mental wellness topics I discuss, uh, I go in there and put something in almost every single day. So uh, there's definitely more access to me through that Facebook group. Um, but please come back for our next show here, too, because you guys have been absolutely incredible. Amazing. And you had no idea you were going to go this long sitting in that chair. But no um, what I'm going to say is uh, you also have uh, a way to email her as well, uh, which is the Coach Jess Show at gmail.com. She put that together so you can reach out to her that way if you'd like to do that. Uh, you have the Coach Jess 2021 page as well. You can, of course, like, comment, share what you see there and follow that page. Uh, she will be able to see uh, what you put there if you want to write to her uh, or you want to DM. Uh, there's so many different uh, things that have been said here. Great words. Thank you, Coach Jess. Uh, from a fellow coach, uh, the PAC coach, Anastasia, uh, the book goddess says thank, thanks to Jess. Uh, thank you to Jess. Thank you to you, excuse me, my friend, uh, and to myself for a great show. You both are so kind. Um, I have to tell you what Angie, who really uh, brought in the book for us to use, uh, highlighting four points out of that says absolutely love coach Jess. Oh, uh, take on the, uh, she loved the fact that you took on the four agreements. I've heard so many great things from you today. She's telling you coach, and it is appreciated many exclamation marks and, uh, uh, love for you uh, for that, as well as the hearts that are going across the screen. We appreciate you appreciating it, but uh, you have no idea how much we appreciate you, uh, being here and uh, watching this back and sharing it with your friends, sharing it with your friends, the points that you've learned, keeping each other emotionally safe, keeping each other emotionally focused on the positive and not allowing anyone to slip back into a relationship or a painful way without setting strong boundaries and making sure people understand that you must protect your heart. You must protect your heart. So please make sure you're welcomed anytime to be a part of the Coach Jess show. Um, let's see. Anything else, Coach? I just love you. Really so so appreciative that everyone is able to join us. And uh, I really hope that we see all of you again in another couple of weeks. Thank you for everything that was contributed as well. You guys had an excellent point, excellent um, ideas and concepts to talk about. And yeah, it made my whole day to be here with you guys. You're so awesome. <laughs> we just did this. We have no idea. We should go now, though. <laughs> we, really should. we really should go. I think you should go have your life right now. We should go. All right. We love each and every one of you. Thank you, Angie, uh, from Leave uh, No Contact, Go Ghost. Mo the Chick says thanks to both of you. Thank you, Mo. Everybody, Ursula in your bonnet, um, <laughs> Anne, who's already gone. She's in Ireland uh, in your hair rollers. And Mo, perfect as is. All of you, thank you uh, for being here. We're out. We're gone. Later. Later.